location under a farm pond somewhere in the Midwest. Your host is Jim Crowley. This is Slick Fish Radio. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of Slick Fish Radio. Wow, into March already. This is this is crazy, man. I can't believe how fast the year is already starting to go. We want to thank our friends over at Shields in Springfield, Illinois. As I just said, we had a great fish fest over there. That was a lot of fun. Also, a friend from Lure Parts Online. If you're watching tonight, make sure you stay tuned to the end of the show because we're going to be putting on some discount codes and things like that. Uh, for you. Uh, and Lure Parts has got a lot of neat stuff coming out later this week and next week. So I'll be making some announcements on social media for that. Our friends from Cast King just got done building a great rod uh, with our friends from Mud Hall. Just had a, a great conversation with them uh, last week. We're going to be offering, I'm going to be offering soon, or Muddle's going to be offering soon, some signature series rod kits uh, that I helped with, uh, along with Matt Steffen and I think Terry Scroggins as well. Those are on there, and I think mine are being added here pretty soon. So I will keep you, I will keep you in the loop about when those are some great new rod kits coming from Mudhole. And as always, we are powered by our friends at Dakota Lithium with their great 11 year warranty. This year, my boat's going to have four Dakota Lithium uh, batteries in it. And when we do, uh, we're going to be next month, we're going to be doing, uh, the boat is going to be having everything added onto it. I'm going to be doing a walkthrough with you. I'm going to show you all the new equipment that I have on my mirror craft and, and all the cool stuff that's going to be on there. So we're going to do a whole install type video and show you uh, how the great people uh, at Precision Sonar are helping us with that install. It's going to be some really, really cool stuff going on within the next month or two as we get out on the water, getting ready to film season three uh, for Jim Crowley Outdoors. So, but you guys came here tonight and who I wanted to talk to, I met this guy just a little while back. I'm going to bring on Spencer Clark. How you doing, man? Doing great, Jim. Thanks for uh, having me on your uh, your show here. Uh, it's an honor to be on your show and uh, really excited to get to talking about fishing. Well, sure. I bet. You just got back from Kentucky Lake. You're guiding all the time. I saw some pictures where you were catching trout. So I always think it's funny when it, when a guide goes and does one thing and then comes back and catches something else. So your garage has got to be loaded with about, I don't know, eight, nine hundred rods or so in there. You probably, <laughs> yeah. probably got a ton of stuff, don't you? Oh, yeah. I mean, uh, my, my house nowadays is pretty much like a tackle shop. I mean, it's crazy <laughs> how much fishing gear I have. But uh, over the course of the year, I pretty much end up using it all. So, you know, you can never have enough fishing tackle. Uh, so the next Toyota Series tournament is going to be at Grand Lake, Oklahoma. And uh, I have a special relationship with Grand Lake. Uh, I actually won a boat over there. Um, won the BFL Regional as a co-angler back in 2019 um, on Grand Lake. Uh, so I've got some some good history, some good memories on Grand. Uh, had a couple other good finishes over there. Uh, it tends to fish a little bit more like Lake of the Ozarks, which is uh, kind of what I consider like my home lake when it comes to tournament fishing. Mm -hmm. um, but we've got that coming up, you know, second week, April. Um, before that, though, I've got a, a, a BFL over at Lake of the Ozarks. And uh, I've got a lot of guide trips to run between now and there. Um, so I don't know if I'll get a chance to practice, but I'm really looking forward to that one, too, because... Lake of the Ozarks in March is usually really good. But there's going to be there's going to be a lot more things. We've, we've said this before in the past on the show is that there is more intelligent fishing pressure on the water now than ever than ever before. And but it still goes down to the basics where you still got to get a game plan. You got to stick with that game plan to the best you can and can't let that stuff get in your head. You just have to go after with what you find and what you know. You can't fish somebody else's game. If you do, you lose. You have mm -hmm. to be able to fish your game and be able to adjust. And I'm sure you're starting to see that probably more so now than ever with as intelligent as a competition has gotten, hasn't it? It wasn't that long ago that we didn't really think about going out into the center of a cove and, and you know, and, and just making a couple casts of brush piles all day in order to catch fish. Um, you know, something that we really didn't have the ability to do um, efficiently. Um, but nowadays, you know, with this technology, it's something that you can't overlook when you go to practice anymore. You kind of got to look you know, behind what usually is working that time of the year and then also be looking ahead because uh, you just you just don't Great know point. what you're doing, you know. And it's going to be interesting to see how the anglers adjust to this going forward. And uh, what are you using now? Do you do you use forward-facing sonar on your guide service? Do you have that on your boat now? 
Oh yeah. So I've I've actually got two live scope transducers on my boat, and I and I've been playing with it, still trying to figure out, you know, uh, you know how how I'm gonna set those up and tweaking it. Um, it's kind of a you know, you, you just keep learning with it as you yeah. go. Um, I consider myself to be pretty good with live scope for the most part, but then there's guys that are just experts with it. Sure. And so I, I feel, you know, I'm probably better than 90% of the guys out there with live scope just from, uh, you know, guiding on Table Rock Lake, real deep, clear lake. Uh, we fish usually deeper than 30 foot here. Wow. And so, you know, you yeah. go to most of these lakes, I mean, that's, that might be the main channel, but here, you know, we catch them anywhere from 25 to 80 foot of water sometimes. So, you get pretty dialed in with your electronics, but uh, there's always, you know, there's always room for improvement. And that's sure. really what I'm trying to figure out now um, is just, you know, how I can kind of fine tune things and, and just get get more uh, comfortable and more confident and, uh, you know, going to different bodies of water and, and really utilizing it and making it more of a part of my game plan. Because uh, believe me, I'm the type of guy that when I get to a new lake, I want to I want to just run as many <laughs> places as I can and fish fast and cover water and power fish. That's, you know, that's kind of like how I grew up fishing, you know, and, and the mindset that it can be hard to get rid of when you've been doing it your whole life. So um, but I'm always working to try to, you know, incorporate the new stuff and, and get better with it. But I'll be honest, you know, some of these kids, um, they come right out the gate and uh, they are very good at playing the video game when it comes to these electronics. And I think part of it too is they just don't have, you know, 20 years experience of catching right. fish, you know, on spitter baits or crank baits in a foot of water. I mean, they don't have those memories in their head. They just, they just go. And, you know, that's hard to do sometimes when, you know, you've been fishing, you know, for your whole life. So, well, there's no doubt. I mean, I think I, I heard something Gerald Swindle said last week and he said, you know, I'm, although he's, you know, learning, he's learning it. Uh, learning forward face and sonar he goes i'm not going to abandon the girl that brought me to the dance for one that's prettier right. and <laughs> you know and, and i thought that was a great way to put it because you know we learned off of instincts i had a guy tell me a couple of weeks ago he goes heck he goes i remember you were one of the last guys who actually had a flasher up front i said i know and i did fine with that and i did because i i just wanted to see bottom changes you know you, i just wanted to see the change in the bottom and depending what i would found depending on the seasonal pattern and it would and it worked quite well on that for reservoirs especially but you know now that you have that new technology technology is technology it's it's you know we don't we don't know where it's going to take us we don't know what's going to come after this but i've always said that you know bass only do three things they swim they eat they make little fish that's all they do and they simply react. They simply react to their environment. So we're going to see how they end up reacting, you know, to this, and they're going to adjust. And then we're probably going to have to do something else. It's an. I think it's still. It's going to be an endless game of cat and mouse, especially. And that's what makes part of bass fishing so exciting. It is that endless game of cat and mouse. And how? I mean, it's a predator prey relationship. We're the predator. They're the prey. How are we going to get better? And what we're doing. So it's going to be interesting to see going forward. What, what I think is cool is you being you being a guide on Table Rock, there's numerous species that you're getting to learn. And I'm glad we're having this conversation right now about this is because I, I disagree with people who say, oh, they can just go out and catch fish with forward facing sonar. No, you cannot. Right. No, you cannot. There, well, there's a learning them. curve. There's a learning curve like anything else. And in my opinion, those anglers already had to be good. Mm -hmm. before they got better with this. Oh, I don't care sure. how young they are. Some people just have it. Mm -hmm. And and if they do, more power to them. God gave them a wonderful, wonderful gift in that regard. But, and you being a guide, I'd, I'd like you to talk a little bit more about that because I think right there, you said it's a learning, you said before, it's a learning process and you're learning more about that. So can you can you go back to like when you first started it and where you are now? And the reason I'm asking you that question is because I want people to understand that this is a learning process. It's not something mm -hmm. where you turn it on and you're catching fish. Right. So what I can tell you from my experience is there, just like in everything else, there's, there's different levels when it comes to, uh, you know, learning live scope. It's like, it's like, you know, an onion. I mean, you got all these different layers and, uh, you know, when you first get live scope, you might go out to the lake and, and you're wondering like, you know, how am I going to use live scope to become a better fisherman? So you start going down the bank, looking at stuff and, uh, you know, you're having a hard time distinguishing what kind of fish you're throwing at, you know, uh, 
Um, but as you get better with it, you start realizing, okay, like, you know, say I'm on Table Rock Lake, um, you know, from fishing Table Rock Lake, I know the depth range that most of the time the fish relate to. And I start figuring out what kind of cover those fish really like yep. to relate to. <clears throat> and that's where live scope really gives you a lot of information once you start getting to that point. Um, because you'll start noticing, you know, certain trees, the fish prefer more than other ones. There you um, go. You'll notice that certain kind of docks in relation to like the main river channel. Um, and, and it just helps you really piece that together. And uh, I imagine, you know, uh, I've been on Tiller Rock Lake now for, for several years guiding. Um, you go to different bodies of water. Every lake has its own depth that the bass prefer to live in. Um, you know, it has to do with like the oxygen level, uh, maybe the water clarity. Uh, what kind of food is in the lake. Um, but you start noticing trends when you go to different bodies of water. And the more you spend time fishing with it, the more that picture of where the fish want to be becomes clearer and clearer. And then you go from catching, you know, say like good, you know, keeper size bass, you know, tournament level bass to uh, figuring out what the real big fish in the lake really like to do. And that's the hard part if you're a tournament angler is, you know, getting to that next level even within there. Um, to where you start really understanding, you know, where those big fish like to hang out, what kind of cover they really relate to in the lake, um, what depth range they're at. And, uh, you know, it changes daily. Um, I'll tell you from, you know, my own experience on Table Rock Lake, uh, the fish always in these lakes move around a lot. And, um, you know, just like when we got back from Kentucky Lake, uh, you know, Jake Lawrence, fantastic fisherman on Kentucky Lake. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's my understanding, I guess he's been a guide there for several years. But I would I would bet money on it that he really understands that current flow on Kentucky Lake, how no those question. fish set up in the current, what what kind of banks, what kind of current, you know, what kind of flow those fish tend to, you know, be in certain places, the presentation, you know, just how he needs to do everything. And you learn that with putting in a lot of hours. So so live scope's gonna help you. But it's not the, the be-all, end-all cure. You still have to put your time in to really start to dial it in. Yep. And then once you spend that time, um, you can go to different bodies of water and catch fish that you might not have ever been able to catch without it. But there's a, there's a lot of hard work that goes into studying that and, and really getting to the next level with it, I feel like. Yeah, agreed. And when you said, you know, when you said about him understanding current, I remember back in the day, Mark Menendez was, you know, did really, really well you know, down there on Kentucky Lake. And, and I remember just, I, this is a long, long time ago, but him talking about current and you have to understand Pickwick Lake is another one where the guys who do really well there, you have to understand when they pull water, something, how that, how that current affects those fish. It's going to, no question. It's going to position those fish. It's just like in a river system, that current's going to, that current is going to position those fish. But if you already are good on a lake or good at figuring that stuff out, that's why I love three six. I love Hummingbird 360 so much is because I know I was catching fish. Now I can see exactly what I was catching them off of. And then you go one step further and you may really be able to dial that in a little bit. And fish are still going to be fish. Like, mm -hmm. have you know, and I heard um, I've got Drew Gill coming on the show again in another couple of weeks. And Drew has said before, you know, everything and he's not been the only one, but uh, just because I've talked to him more about it. But, you know, he said a thing that we've just think about this. We caught fish all these years without any of this stuff. And a lot of what we thought about fish was wrong. Right. You know, and we still <laughs> caught a ton of fish. <laughs> right. so, it's it's mind-blowing. You know, yeah. So I mean, that, that's how awesome this this sport is for somebody, and especially you put new technology in it and you're learning. And I've used it a little bit, especially ice fishing. And it's amazing to see how fish react to to your lures. And I want to talk a little bit more about that with you, but I want to talk to you about a little bit about walleyes and trout. Um, cause I, I, I think that's going to be really interesting to talk about and we'll talk about some bass too, but we're going to take a break everybody, but do not go away because I want to get more into depth about this because if anything tonight, not only I'm glad that I've got, uh, Spencer on here tonight, but I wanted to actually talk with somebody that hopefully we can get rid. And so far, I think we're doing that is getting rid of the fallacies that is going with this new technology, whether you like it or not, you don't have to have it. You don't have to use it. Does it work? No question. Is it going to teach us things about fish we didn't know before? That's what interests me the most. And that's what we're going to get back in to a little bit with Spencer when we get back here in a couple of minutes. As I always say, we'll be back in two. Where's that other two? Right there. 
Located in Springfield, Illinois' largest selection of sports and sportswear, hunting, fishing, specialty shops and services, a 65-foot Ferris wheel, 16,000-gallon saltwater aquarium, an industry-leading knowledge of employees. You don't take chances at Shields ever. Go to Shields.com. At Lure Parts Online, we have everything you need to make your own lures, pour soft plastics, tie your own flies, build your own rods, and more. Easy ordering ensures you get your products quickly. You can build it all with Lure Parts Online. Achieving affordable innovation through novel concepts and in-house ingenious designs. Casking cost-effective e-commerce practices directly market to consumers, cutting costs by 30% or more on average. Affordable innovation, superior quality. Casking.com. Mudhole is your number one resource for custom fishing rods. Mudhole is the world's largest supplier of rod building, tackle crafting supplies, and instruction. They have the best components and brands you trust. American Tackle, MHX, CRB, Pro Products, Fuji, REC, AFCO, Winthrop, and more. It's easy to build your next custom fishing rod at Mudhole.com. Believe in quality is measured by lifespan and harnessing their unique chemistry and engineering know-how. Dakota Lithium lasts four times longer. Powering your passion with an 11 year warranty. Find out more at dakotalithium.com. There we go. Come here. Get in here. Yeah. Nice fish right there. Hi, I'm Jim Crowley. Make sure you catch my show, Jim Crowley Outdoors, Monday to Friday, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and 4 p.m. Central Standard Time, exclusively on Wired to Fish TV. Look for Jim Crowley Outdoors on Wired to Fish TV on free ad-supported streaming TV, including Plex, that can be downloaded in the App Store at Apple TV, Roku, Samsung, and others. Yeah, we are back with Captain Spencer Clark. We were talking, uh, and we're going to continue a little bit, about forward-facing sonar. And if you're just joining us in, what I'm talking about is that you just don't put this thing on your boat and turn a little dial, and all of a sudden you're automatically catching fish. It just don't work that way. And every angler who's gotten good at it has gotten good at it because of practice. It is another tool to get something done. And what I was, what Spencer and I were just talking about that, I think it's really cool learning fish behavior. Uh, you know, we all thought we knew, and some of it was probably right. A lot of it was probably wrong. That's just how it goes. And, you know, with this new technology, I, I noticed it ice fishing about, you know, I didn't know fish were going to do that. I didn't. I didn't know that they would just, when you didn't have any fish, you didn't f figure any were there, you weren't catching any. I looked down, there's a whole school of crappies down there, and they wanted absolutely nothing to do with what I was showing them. What I want to talk to you about and what I think is going to help your, your mission going forward, learning more and more about this, is you're not just fishing for bass with this. As a guide, you're fishing for crappies, walleye, and trout. All three of them act differently. And so just tell us, tell us a couple things about what are you seeing, like with trout, that's got to be re really, really cool. And, and I think it's going to be cool walleyes too, but just go through some scenarios. What, when you're taking clients out and you position or you find some fish like trout, for example, I just think that's, I, I think that's going to be interesting. And these are mostly rainbows, if I'm not mistaken, or they're browns where you're fishing too. We've got some brown trout too. As cool. Well. We've got some browns. It seems like, you know, we kind of go through we kind of go through spurts as far as, you know, when they become really active and we start really catching a lot of brown trout, mm -hmm. uh, but the rain, you know, the rainbows are the mainstay, you know, for what I guide for, but, uh, you know, it's, it's weird how, you know, it just kind of comes in, you know, uh, um, highs and lows with the Browns. We'll have, you know, several weeks where we're catching brown trout like crazy. And then, you know, they just sort of fall off. And, uh, a lot of it has to do, I think with water temperature and, uh, sure. you know, we get into the summer months, a lot of the big, you know, brown trout, they feed at night. Um, you know, that's one of the predominant, you know, windows of opportunity, I guess, to go out and catch a big brown. Um, and then, you know, in the cooler months, like early spring and early fall, it seems like more brown trout start showing up. So they like uh, that cold water. Yes, they do. Yes, they, they like do. That cold water. <laughs> so, yeah. So um, what do yeah. you see? What are you seeing on when when you're scoping for these brown trout and you, you've got clients out and you find a bunch of trout like rainbows or whatever? What what does it look like? What's going on when you when you see, just how do you see trout? What do you see when you see them? Yeah, so what's kind of interesting about trout, I mean, um, you know, depending on, you know, what part of the lake 
uh, you might be on like say a lake like Lake Tiny Como or you know I guide at. Um, they get into schools just like you know a lot of different fish do. Um, there'll be like little pods of them where you know there'll be like ten or fifteen of them, and they'll they'll get in these little wolf packs and they sort of you know travel that way. Um, but what's been really interesting, you know, on my guide trips with using live scope for catching trout, um, you notice that some days they're down on the bottom. Um, you know, they'll be real tight to the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, usually that's when you have a little bit more current. And then, you know, if the current isn't as heavy, they kind of get up and, you know, swim a little bit more freely. Um, you know, they might just, there might be 10 or 15 of them and they're two foot below the surface and you might be in 20 foot of water. Wow. Um, so that's always kind of interesting because, uh, you know, there's a lot of days where we might be fishing 20 foot of water, but we're catching them out of five foot of water, just like you would maybe live scope bass or crappie or anything. Uh, they kind of go up and down the water column, just like all, all other types of fish. So that for me has been probably the most interesting thing about using live scope, you know, and guiding for trout that I can tell you. I think that's cool. We got some Missouri boys chiming in here uh, tonight. Chris, welcome, man. Glad you made it tonight. Uh, Jay Beffa is on here. Look at that. Spencer Clark in the house. What's up, guys? Jay is just an absolutely great guy. You know this guy. Oh, my goodness. This guy is this guy is trouble right here. <laughs> He is he is just he is just flat out trouble right here. But what what a great guy, what a great company. And I know you work with the Bait Cave as well. Oh yes. I mean some, some of the best, some of the best handcrafted products out there. We've had Riley on the show before. Him and his him and his wife, they do a great job. Hard workers, great product line. Riley, don't let this go to your head when I see it iCast, brother. I don't want to hear a thing about it. But just a great company at the Bay Cave there. And you've been using a lot of their stuff for a while, too, haven't you? Yeah, so uh, Bay Cave became a new sponsor of mine this year, and I have loved all of their products. I mean, yeah. it's amazing, you know, what Riley and his, his wife are doing over there, um, you know, in the shop, um, coming up with some really good looking baits. Awesome. I mean, and all the baits float which is something that, you know, you know, is just going to catch you a lot more fish. Um, you know, a lot of companies out there, they have, they have plastics, they just sink right to the bottom. So I know when I'm throwing the bait cave stuff, I'm getting a lot more action, which, you know, translates into getting a lot more fish and a lot sure. more. And uh, the colors that he's able to come up with in the cave there, um, you know, I mean, they just look amazing. So um, I'm really happy to have them on board this year as one of my sponsors and, and just love, love them to death uh great people and uh i mean everything they got from the baits to the packaging um he's blowing it away i mean i, I love it okay so like in my experience with walleye fishing you know say on say on table rock lake um you know in the springtime the walleye they always make the migration up these creeks and they get way back into the creeks. I mean, I'm talking like kayak country is where they like to go. Um, you know, they start migrating up the creeks in order to do their spawn. And uh, um, for the most part, though, when I do my walleye trips, it's in the summertime. Mm -hmm. And we'll find these walleye, you know, anywhere from 30 to 40 foot deep most of the time. So uh, and and really, they kind of run together with the spotted bass here on Table Rock Lake. Oh, very cool. Um, so the great thing about it is, you know, once we get into like, you know, end of May, all the way through September, um, you can target big spotted bass and walleye pretty much at the same time. Um, so that's when you really start to see a lot of walleye being caught down here at Table Rock Lake. Um, now in the winter time, I've caught them as deep as 90 foot deep on the bottom wow. of the spoon, which, you know, never would have been able to do that without live scope. But, <laughs> you know, um, it, it's crazy. I mean, with live scope, I've caught, you know, walleye, you know, 90, 100 foot deep, you know, relating to bait on the bottom. Sometimes you think they're bass because we catch bass that deep too. Um, usually they're a little bit shallower than that and they like to suspend and be a little more pelagic, like you said. Um, but I believe that there's fish always deep on Table Rock and, and really what kind of, you know, makes them shallow up is just that thermocline. We get a, a thermocline in the summertime that usually is around that 30 foot mark. And that really starts bringing a lot of those walleye up from the from the depths to where, you know, we're, we're catching them more so, um, you know, when we're just trying to catch bass, really. Um, now, I've, I've sniped some, you know, 70, 80 foot deep on a jigger <laughs> in the wintertime. I mean, they're kind of all over the place, but, uh, you know, they just they just do their thing. Like you said, they swim and they eat. Um, but they like to get into the creeks like late in the year in the fall and in the spring. 
And then in the wintertime, I start really catching them out on the drops where we catch bass, if I could give you any information about them. Yeah, that, that's really cool. One, one of the fish I haven't caught a lot of is spots. I, I've caught some, but just not a lot. I've always wanted to go after just bigger spots, like three pounds plus. I just, I've, I've just never been around enough of those to do that. And is Table Rock one of those places where you can get some pretty good sized spots like that? Oh, I mean, it, right now, if you come to Table Rock Lake, um, there's some real fat spotted bass in this lake right now. Um, usually they're gorging themselves on shad. And the cool thing you start figuring out about spotted bass with live scope is they're always in schools. Hardly ever catch one just hanging out by himself, unless he's, you know, just a fish that's up there on the bank, just kind of like those, you know, one-off fish or something. But for the most part, um, you know, they're in schools anywhere from, you know, 10 to 15 fish. Wow, cool. And what you kind of learn with live scope too, you know, from fishing tail rock is, is a lot of times, unless you find them, you know, like relating to bait fish, uh, those spotted bass, they tend to like to be a little bit more around the cedar trees and a little bit deeper than like your large mouth and small mouth. So they don't really always run together. They sort of do their own thing. thing yep. Yep. And so yep. that's been interesting, you know? Well, you got, uh, you got a question here. Somebody's wanting tournament info. I think you know this guy, but here's Jay Beff. He says, hey, I'm thinking about jumping in hey, this weekend. You catching many on a spinnerbait yet? I think the spinnerbait could really be a player this weekend, especially if you made a run like up the river. Um, get up there, you know, say you went up the Niangua or you went up the, you know, the river, like that 50, 45, 50, 60 mile marker up at Lake of the Ozarks. It's got to be going pretty soon here. I know a lot of good bags get caught this time of the year going up there. You can probably take a spinnerbait and a jig. And if you got on the, in the right Creek at the right time, you can catch them pretty good. Um, Kentucky Lake, I threw a spinnerbait quite a bit in practice and I caught a lot of small bass on it. Mm. It seemed like, you know, the water there was like 52 degrees and I haven't taken a look at Lake of the Ozarks, but it's got to be getting close because this time of the year, um, those fish start moving up. You get a nice windy day. Um, you know, maybe take that spinnerbait, go throw it out the end of uh, some some boat ramps. Lake of the Ozarks has a lot of boat ramps. Mm -hmm. um, seems like that's a real good spot to catch them on a spinnerbait if you get that pattern going. Um, might give it a shot this weekend. It's going to take a lot of weight. I know that because we're <laughs> we're coming into the the pre-spawn season here and uh, Lake of the Ozarks is full of big bass. So, you know, you need to catch a big bag in order to do well. So you might as well tie on a big fish bait, tie on an E-Factor lure spinner bait mm -hmm. and go throw it at the bank and hope you catch 20 something pounds. Well, now I can tell you right now there's uh, Ken Braun here is either, I think this might be the first time he's been on the show here, but either he's a friend of yours or he may want your phone number. Cause he said, let's see a gun show. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, that's just what he put on there. So, hey, Ken, if you're not, hey, welcome to the show, brother. Whatever. But, uh, oh, shoot. yeah, and Jay, I've been and Jay Beffa just said he's at the Table Rock this weekend, is where he said. So, oh, um, nice. maybe he needs a new, maybe Ken needs a t shirt from you. I think maybe, maybe he'll go and buy, maybe he'll go and buy a t shirt from you. Sounds so. like a plan to me. Um, you know, <laughs> weekend, Ken, this weekend, if you got nothing going on, Saturday, they have a spring thing going on at Ducky's Drive Thru. That's, oh, yeah. Uh, a new liquor store that they got down here at Tilbury Rock Lake. Um, Saturday afternoon from like two to four, I'm going to be pulling my boat up there and talking fishing with people. So if you hit me up, tell me you're going to be there. I'll bring you a t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. You know what? There's nothing. I don't think nothing, nothing says caution and security more than like a drive through liquor store. I just, you know, <laughs> that's where that, that's where the guy wants to drink on the run, you know? So <laughs> that's good. But I saw, I saw actually that post this week and I thought that was really cool. I'm like, that looks just looks like a fun, neat place over there. It looks like they had a pretty good tackle selection over there. Oh yeah. Like uh, I'm going to be helping them get a little bit more tackle in there. Um, cool. I know this summer, you know, they're going to be carrying uh live bait, like night crawlers and stuff. So, um, you know, come to Table Rock Lake, uh, stop in, get your drinks for the lake and uh, get you some live bait and uh, hang on out. Some great people over there. And they got really good pizza too. So, Oh, Hey, a little spot to stop off, you know, on your way to the lake to do some fishing. You got alcohol, live bait, and pizza. What the hell more could you ask for? So, you know, I think that's just like the perfect trifecta. That's awesome. So, hey, what? So, talk, tell them about your guide service now. If they want to hook up with you, uh, what is what fish are you are you targeting mostly right now? Um, so, right now, personally, I'm I'm doing a lot of trout trips right now. Uh, spring break is the time we we get a lot of people wanting to come down and do trout trips, um, doing bass fishing as well too. Um, right now, Table Rock Lake is fishing so good for bass fishing. You can go out and just catch 
so many fish that your hands bleed. Like, you know, just two to three pound fish are everywhere right now. Uh, Table Rock Lake's fishing probably better than it's ever fished in the last couple of years since I've been here. Um, as far as just numbers and, and really having a good time right now. Um, the lake is really kicking out the fish. Uh, we had some tournaments earlier this spring, and uh, if you didn't have 18 pounds, you didn't even get a sniff at getting a check. So, I mean, it is on fire. It's probably the best lake in the Ozarks right now to be fishing. That's awesome. I've heard I've heard a lot of good things about that lake. Matter of fact, we were even thinking I was talking with my camera guy and maybe next spring uh, that might just so we can get out a little bit earlier than we usually do here in Illinois. We're like, you know, we and I I know enough people down there on Table Rock right now just to go down and at least say hi to some people, but just hang out and go catch some fish and have some fun. It'd be it'd be at least a little bit earlier season fishing uh, than it would be here in Illinois. So when do you start? I just had a guy text me the other night about walleye fishing. When do you start really chasing after walleyes too, in case they want to make a trip? Um, so what the walleye fishing for me, if I had to give you the two best months, um, as far as my guide service goes to really catch a lot of walleye would be June and July. It seems like July down here is one of the better months that you can really catch a lot of walleye uh, it, they they school up like on these deep points and uh you know it's it's something that i've kind of figured out you know just spending a lot of time fishing you know those those certain little points where they they really like to hang out at but june and july are probably the best but uh we've also had some really good you know big walleye caught as late as september um had a guy trip a couple years ago uh you know an eight-year-old caught like a 34 inch walleye Woo! so i mean and uh, oh, I, know, man. I, know, uh, I know a fellow guy down here uh eric oliverson he's been guiding for a really long time i think they had a 15 pound walleye earlier this spring oh on a guy my trip. goodness um so table rock's got some some really nice walleye in it um but yeah june july would be my picks for you know trying to come down and and you know limit out on those you know, like when we fish them up north, anywhere from, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Ontario, um, you know, when they get when they get on deeper areas, a jig and wrap is always a good is, is always a good option for me. Is that is that something you're using or what do you do to target those deep walleyes? Oh, yeah. So so a white spoon, a jig and wrap, um, you know, say if I'm fishing, you know, artificials is, is kind of my go to baits because. When you get down, you know, say 30 to 40 foot deep, it's it's hard to get a lot of baits down there efficiently and work them. Sure. Um, so, you know, it comes to fishing those usually, you know, just kind of snapping it really hard, triggers those walleye to bite. I've caught some real nice walleye on a spoon. Uh, the jigging wrap works really well. Uh, now, probably the best bait overall would be to throw a night crawler down there if you, if you want to get serious and catch a lot of walleye and do it quickly. Um, they always love night crawlers. I know up north they use leeches for them. Yep. Um, you know, a lot of guys will use like a leech tip jig head or something. Um, but those would be my picks if you wanted to target walleye. Yeah. Now, Chris Hempson just come on and he said, how's a jig bite right now? And you were just talking, he said in depth. So he's, he's from around by you or whatever. So is a jig bite going right now? Oh, yeah. I mean, you can always catch a fish on a jig here at Table Rock Lake. Um, if you're talking bass, I don't know if he's talking walleye or yeah, Chris, are you talking bass or walleye, Chris? I'm, I'm guessing he's talking bass, but I'm not sure. Um, Chris, if you say something there, we'll answer. He'll he'll answer the question for you. Uh, just let us know if you're talking about um, bass or, or walleyes right now. So, but yeah, so and you're are you chasing crappies this time of year now too, or mostly trout? Occasionally, I'll get somebody you know for a crappie trip, for, but for the most part, I specialize in bass and trout. That's kind of the two things that I really okay. stick to. And then, like I said, as we get into the summer months, uh, you know, I love chasing the walleye as well. So, yeah. Now, Chris said he he was, and I thought he was. He's talking about bass. So, how's the jig bite right now, and what depth about? Um, so good, a good general depth that I would say if you're going to throw a jig, um, you know, you get up into the river arms, like say you go up the James or you go way up the, you know, the, the White River. Um, it's going to be a little bit shallower, you know, anywhere from like you know 15 to 20 foot deep. Uh, if you're fishing down here at the dam. Uh, you probably want to focus more on that 28 to 30 foot depth off some of those points. Um, but they can be shallow and deeper depending on the day. But uh, it, it seems like, you know, in the dam area, if you're fishing anywhere from like 25 to 35, somewhere in there, that's that's usually where they like to hang out a lot. Oh, and when you're talking about that jig bite like that, I got to ask you this because I know you're on the Cast King team too. So what is what is your favorite bait cast reel for jig fishing? For I have mine, but what what's yours? So. 
so for some of the smaller, like the smaller little bitty jigs, mm -hmm. um, I like the MG12 just because okay. that reel is just super light. And you pair that up with a, uh, they call it the Getting Jiggy Rod, the Sage series mm -hmm. and casking. That tip's a little bit softer. It works really good at throwing like a little small finesse jig, you know, maybe on like 12 to 15 pound, you know, fluorocarbon. Mm -hmm. um, now for me, like if I'm going to be, say, going up the Lake of the Ozarks, and, you know, flipping a jig behind cables or, you know, docks, going the 20-pound line. Um, I really like throwing the the new Skeet Reese reel. The, the mm -hmm. Icon Skeet Reese reel has been really good. It's a smooth reel, um, a little bit heavier duty. Really like flipping with that. And I've been throwing my jigs on the Ribbit, which is like the Frog Rod in the Asage mm -hmm. series, and, and having a lot of luck with that just because it's got a little bit more power, a little bit more backbone. So when you get that bite, you almost always get a good hook set. Um, able to move that fish out of that cover. That's cool. Yeah. So for like my favorite jig reel on that is a Speed Demon Elite 8-6 to 1. That is my, I throw that actually on a jig. I throw that on a swim jig. Uh, I, I, I love that reel. I've been using it for the past two or three seasons now. And it's just one of those, I mean, Casking's got so many reels with so many different gear ratios that you can easily set them to whatever technique you're doing. Uh, but yeah, those, those are that's two great options that you offered right there. That speed demon elite is just, God, it's just a bulletproof son of a gun. I just, I just love them. Spinner reels wise. Let's go for trout. What's your favorite spinner reel for trout? So I'll tell you this from, you know, being a guide, taking people fishing every day, uh, the cast King Zephyr series reels yep. in the, in, you know, the, I love the 2000, the 2000 yep. size. Um, if you're just looking for a reel that, you know, isn't super expensive, I think, you know, they're about 50 bucks a reel. Yeah. It's really hard to go wrong with that reel. Um, they're pretty much bulletproof. I mean, I have, I have all kinds of clients and, you know, they do all kinds of crazy stuff with, you know, fishing rods and reels and, uh, you know, it's enough to make you cringe. Yeah. Oh, I mean, these are really <laughs> They just take a beating. I mean, it's oh, yeah. unbelievable, like how well that they last. Uh, you know, with the amount of abuse that I put them through. But the 2000 series and the Zephyr, um, they've got the green ones now. Those are yep. the ones I've currently been using. Work really good when it comes to you know light line bass fishing, trout fishing. I use that yep. same series reel for for doing both jobs. Yep. That's how much I love it. So yeah, the Zephyr, and the, the Zephyr, and the 2000 size and five two to one is because of that low gear ratio, I use it for throwing a hair jig for, for everything, for a 1 16th ounce hair jig, because you got to throw that thing so slow. And that Zephyr is rated for both freshwater and saltwater. And you're right, I never thought about that. What a great reel for a guide to let his clients use because you're not freaking out. It's not a $150, $200 reel, and it's going to stand up to just about everything. It is. I, it's, it's one of my favorite, and it's probably one of the most underrated reels in the Cast King lineup. But when, and those of you who are uh, live here tonight, I'm going to put out a discount code for Casking at the end of this. Look at that Zephyr reel that we're both talking about. Kids, clients, or just a reel that you want it, that is literally, like he said, bulletproof and get it done and actually pretty lightweight that mm. comes in around between 40 and 50 bucks. It is absolutely an amazing, amazing reel that will last you a long time. I've been impressed with that real as well. Hey, before we let you go, why don't you let, let everybody know where they can find you on social media and what is the best way to get a hold of you? Okay, guys. So if, you, if you're looking to book a guide trip, you know, you're coming down to Table Rock Lake, Lake Taney Como, uh, you can reach out to me on Facebook. Spencer Clark Fishing is my page on Facebook. Um, or you can go to my website. It's breakingbassguideservice.com. Um, I've got my contact information on there as well. Uh, reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, either way is fine with me. Uh, we can set up a trip and just go from there. That's awesome, man. I sure appreciate you being uh, on the show tonight. I know you're busy between the tournaments. Then you take a break and go guiding like that's a break. And then you go back and, and do the other stuff. So, but you know what, man, working hard and doing a great job at it. It's been awesome to have you on the show tonight. I'm glad you took a little time out of your busy schedule. I wish you continued success this year. And maybe we'll even get down there in the spring and maybe whack on some of those spots. Uh, with you next time around, but I sure appreciate you uh, having on. God bless you and your family. Continued safety on the road this year and catch a bunch, brother. 
Well, Jim, thanks for having me on the show. It's been great. And hopefully you can get down here and experience, you know, the greatness that Table Rock Lake and Lake Tanicomo has to offer. Um, if you ever want to come down here, don't be a stranger. Just hit me up and we'll go, we'll go yank on some fish. You know what? That doesn't sound like bad bad idea. Now for sure, I really know somebody down there. So that's good. I know a couple, but now I know a guy who knows where they're at. Hey man, thanks a lot. God bless you. Like I said, have a great rest of the night. We'll see you. Thank you, Jim. We'll see you. Very nice guy and a hardworking guy. Check out his guide service over there. I just love that logo, man. Breaking Bass Guide Service. How awesome is that? So glad to have Captain Spencer Clark on. Make sure you find him on Facebook. He's a good representation of the sport. Works hard. And I really think him chasing after all those species of fish, he's already good with that live scope. But just think about this. The more species of fish you chase, the better off you get with anything that you chase after them with. Look forward to good, more good things coming from that young man. That's really cool. Hey, I promise all of you before we leave tonight, I want to give you uh, some discount codes as we always did. We were talking about Casking. So our friends from Casking, here's that code. Look at that Zephyr reel. I know it's not the high end reel. They, they've got those two, but I am telling you, if you have kids, if you have something just middle of the road that you want a good, reliable spinning reel with a low gear ratio, it's five, two to one. As I said, I use it for uh, throwing small hair jigs like 1 16th ounce. I love that reel for that. Uh, go to castking.com, but anything on their website, their tackle boxes, new tools coming out. There's a bunch of new stuff that just came out this past week and more. Casking, top of the line when it comes to innovation. You want to find out more and you want to save a bunch of money? Use this code at castking.com. Put in the code JC52AFF. That's 20% off, man. That's 20% off everything on the site. What I'm telling you is you ain't paying retail again if you use this code when you go to castking.com and check out. There's a ton. Rods, reels, everything on there. But I love the reels. I love the tackle. I love the tackle boxes, the tools. Great, great stuff. Hey, our friends at Dakota Lithium. Nobody supports the sport of bass fishing in my opinion, more when it comes to battery companies, more than Dakota Lithium. They're on bass fishing. They're into walleye fishing. They're into everything. Use this code right here. Slickfish10. Saves you 10% off anything you get from Dakota Lithium. Our friends over at Lure Parts Online, I will be making some announcements next week on new products. We've been working on a couple new things coming out. It's I think they're just about ready. As always, follow me on social media, whether it be Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. TikTok. I will always keep you up to date about the new stuff. If you're looking to place an order at Lure Parts Online, one-time code, use it right there, JC Outdoors 10 and that will give you 10% off. I also want to thank our friends at Mudhole over there, as well as Shields in Springfield, Illinois. Still one of the best tackle stores I've ever been into anywhere. It's awesome. And if you're into rod building, there is no better source for education and solid, solid information. Then our friends over at Mudhole, we get this sport to grow, ladies and gentlemen, as we pass on what we know so our sport will grow. Continue to do that. The more what I always what I always tell parents and when I tell coaches that already have this idea, which I'm going to relate to you, is that we can take this so far. How I feel about it, I've been blessed in my life to have a great career in the outdoor industry. Everything that I pass on to somebody else that didn't know something that I learned. I hope they take it higher and farther than I ever did. And we should all have that mentality. And I know a lot of these coaches do. They want these kids to go farther. They want them to go higher. They want them to exceed their expectations. There is no better sport than that, in my opinion, than fishing. And thank God, bless all you coaches out there. And for all you grandfathers and fathers and mothers that take your kids fishing, trust me, it is an investment that will be worth your life and most certainly to theirs. So as always, I appreciate all of you uh, joining in tonight. It's all, I, I am honored. I am honored. I am honored. And I am blessed that you continue to watch the show and it continues to grow on both shows. And I have not only our sponsors, but our awesome, incredible audience to thank for that. Until next time, God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. See you soon.